Today I'm joined by Ian McKilwee, who is a materials engineer and he's the CEO of FIS. Ian, can you tell me about your role in FIS sure. and also um, more about FIS itself? My job is to, to run the show and I'm supported ably by three real pillars. One um, is my technical director who looks at the technical side of what's happening in the construction sector. My head of skills who looks after the way that we develop people through the sector. And then we have sort of an operational director who looks after the way that we support businesses. So, so we're a trade association. We like to think we're, we're one of the leading, most dynamic trade associations in the construction sector. Um, but, but what we're there to do is to provide a voice for the sector and provide that day-to-day -day support. Um, so finishing interior sector is, is possibly one that people don't know too well. It's a, it's a £10 billion part of the construction sector. So we're the people who come in at the end of the job um, and turn a shell into a hospital or a home or a hotel or a, a retail environment. So the people who put the, wall, the internal walls up, the people who make the building safe through fire compartmentation and generally sort of operate at that end of the construction sector that turns a, a structure into something splendid. Tell me about your career path and how you got into the role that you're in now, but your career path to it, your entry into the construction industry. Well, I've had quite a, a varied career because I'm actually a, a, a qualified materials engineer. Um, but my first job in construction started on a scaffolding yard in 1995, where I wandered in to, to help them sort out some of the, the, the more administrative sides of their business. And, and so technically, I fell in love with construction there. Um, I've had sort of a couple of dalliances outside of the sector, but I always seem to be drawn back in because I, th I think construction is a huge industry. It's a £200 billion sector. Um, we've got some of the biggest companies in the UK operating construction and some of the smallest. Um, we've got family businesses, we've got corporations. So, so the variety of roles and, and work within the construction sector is, is, is staggering. So there is something for everybody and it is an enjoyable sector to work very much because of the people um, and because of the problem solving environment that we create in construction. It's a fast moving sector but it's also exciting and it is shaping not just the landscapes that we see around us, but society itself. The buildings, the way we interact with them is, is fundamentally changing the way that we behave as people. And I think that's a hugely exciting place to work. I think there's a lot of passion that comes from architecture and buildings and people seeing finished buildings. That, that, that is one of those areas that does spark people's imagination. And it also gives us a connection to our past as well because you know, some of our members, you know, we often think of those sort of cutting edge buildings that, 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 that are sort of shooting up around London at the moment, but you know, some of our members are working on ceilings in theatres. You know, they're, they're not just shaping our future, they're preserving our history. And again, that's a, a, a privileged environment in which to work. How do you think we can appeal to more younger people to get them involved in construction so they don't realise that maybe their conception of um, construction is it's all wet work, it's all bricks and mortar. How can we appeal to a younger generation to get them into? Well, I mean, you say wet work, that's one of the, the preconceptions. There's lots of myths around construction, isn't there? We see sort of the programme Cowboy Builders or whatever it is. Uh, and that sort of taints our view of construction, as I say, it's so different from the world, the controlled world that I work in, the professional world that I work in, um, that, 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 yeah, I, I think we've just got to get over that. I, th I think it's also really important for people to understand how important, how, how important construction is to us as a society and us as an economy. So you, you look at some of the numbers around construction, it's a £200 billion industry. 200 billion pounds. There's 30 companies in construction, or they're about there, they're about, they're about, that turn over more than a billion pound as, as individual businesses. Mm. We employ 2.7 million people. 10% of people who work in the UK work in construction. And again, the roles are so varied. So of course we think of trades. So you think of the trades, and there's a, a myriad of trades out there. You know, we think of plastering, carpentry and joiners, sort of those traditional. Um, in our sector, the, 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 the biggest single employing sector is dry lining. Then we think of the architects, that's the next one that comes into our heads and those people that design the buildings. But we forget about the engineers. There's a huge amount of engineers working in the construction sector. But all those businesses need every other role under the sun. 
So in construction, you've got roles in HR, you've got roles in, 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 in marketing, you've got roles in, you've got creative roles. So we, we're a creative industry, we're an engineering industry, we're a, a, a craft industry. I mentioned some of the um, amazing work we do in heritage environment. You know, there is a role and a place for everybody in construction. And I think we haven't, we haven't to date managed to get that across. I think, I think we're changing. Um, you know, uh, but, but we can see that we haven't been doing well enough in some of our diversity figures. You know, only 15% of people employed in construction are female. We're making great strides in improving that, but we've got years to catch up. And, and I think there's huge levers to support that now, because we're now starting to understand sustainability um, and how important the impact of construction on sustainability. So, if somebody comes to work in construction, we can offer them roles around net zero, roles around improving the, the, the environment in which we live. So it's so, so huge opportunities there. We're digitalising as a sector. Um, so, so anyone who wants a career in IT, look no further than construction, because at the moment, I I implementation is low and potentially is huge. Um, so again, I think there's, there's huge opportunities around the sector, not just in the traditional stuff, but in all those other roles that, that support the, the construction sector. And huge opportunities to progress from the sector. And I think we're not quite getting that message across quite as well. And partially maybe because we, we're not as good in the digital space and we haven't quite grasped social media yet. And that's, that's the only place my kids seem to... Everything I say is now validated on TikTok rather than the other way around. So um, maybe that's an area we need to improve. Is there apprenticeship schemes within FIS for people entering the industry? Yes, we've got... I mean, there's every trade now is mapped back to an apprenticeship um, and, and I think those opportunities um, are, are increasing because I think the support for apprenticeships is better than it's ever been. So if you're an employer, the support from both government and CITB has never been stronger. The courses, the qualifications themselves have never been better. Um, they, they have significantly improved over time. It's still quite a complex process but that's where organisations like us come in. You know, we will handhold people through the process. Um, because we're not a commercial organisation, we're not a for-profit organisation, we exist to support our community. This sounds like it offers some really dynamic opportunities for young and old to enter the, the industry. Do you think that the government is doing enough to work with construction and education to actually broaden that education off the industry itself for young people wanting to enter it, for instance? I think I mean, enough is never enough, is it? Uh, you know, there's a lot going on, but often the way the funding and, and finance works for colleges and the drive from schools is, is, is away from construction because that some of those myths are perpetrated through the careers guidance that, that people get. I mean, schools were very focused on university rather than apprenticeships. You know, we still need university students to come into construction, but we also need people to see the benefit of taking that apprenticeship route. In terms of the, the, the wider research we've done, it seems to be about 70% of people who start a construction course never come and work in the industry. And part of that's because they don't ever see construction. That once people see the construction sites, they're not such a scary place, mm. you know? Uh, in fact, they're quite exciting. If you want to see an exciting place, go and stand at the gate of a construction and just see the amount of people who come in and out of a construction site. You know, it's, a, it's, it's they're all little ecosystems that are fascinating places to work. Um, so, so, so again, I, th I think it is about more structured, joined up approach to offering work placements to, 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 to ensure that the funding drives behaviour which is driven by employment, not by qualification. Yeah. We've got to drive people into employment and then deliver the qualifications rather than the other way around. So we've got some dynamic opportunities for young people and also for older people, but what do we do with the current ageing workforce? When they leave the industry, how do you ensure, as the FIS, how do you ensure that there won't be a skills gap, that you won't lose all of that experience? As you said, people may be working on heritage uh, programmes and stuff like that. How would you make sure that you don't lose that, that, that knowledge is passed on? That really cuts the nub of, I think, where we are today and, and, and maybe our biggest challenge at the moment because we're encouraging companies to offer work placements, but companies are incredibly busy right now. Um, the pipeline of work coming out of the pandemic is strong. E even though construction carried on throughout, we've sort of had a bit of pent-up demand from Brexit, we've got a bit of pent-up pent -up demand from the pandemic, and we've got this immigration issue. So, so we are in this catch-22 of we're too busy to offer work placements, which is, which is crazy, but, 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 but it is what it is. And, and I think sometimes construction procurement needs to, needs to give us a little bit more bandwidth to support those kind of things. Again, there's a lot of things in procurement talked about social value, but they tend to score quite low. 
um, and they still, it's, a lot of it still comes down to cost and punitive delay clauses, which, which hamper behaviour. And I think that's something, if, if we're really going to attack the skills gap, we need to look at as a supply chain. One last question. If there's one thing that you could say to a young person who wants to enter the construction industry, what would it be? What would, you, what would be the piece of sage advice? If you're looking to work in an industry where you can have a huge impact on today and tomorrow, then construction is the place for you. I think there's this huge opportunity in construction to look to over, over a career, to look at the contribution you're going to make to our society um, to, in terms of the net zero, in terms of the, the, the landscape that you see, in terms of the way, you know, we've, we, we haven't even talked about smart buildings, we talk about smart cars, smart phones, but smart buildings is the next thing. The, the contributions we're going to make to the evolution of society, the well-being of people, your ability to contribute is, is enormous. You can, you can move around in construction, you can work in corporations, you can work in family businesses, you can set up on your own. The possibilities in construction are endless and the rewards are potentially huge. Thank you very much, Ian. That's brilliant. brilliant. Thank you.